Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have our very special guest today, and it's Charlotte Adams. She has a podcast on our site. She's part of our podcast community. She is amazing with guitar. She loves music, and she teaches the guitar, and she has so much to tell and so many things to show the world because her way of looking at music is beautiful. And today she wants to talk about achieving balance through honoring your nature. And she's going to go more in depth about that. So I'm going to let her, I'm going to give her the stage and let her explain what she means by achieving balance through honoring your nature. So Charlotte, take it away. Thank you. It's so lovely to see you and to be here. Yeah. So when we spoke in one of the previous episodes, I was talking about choosing your path, you know, creating your own personal path. Yes. And, you know, one of the things I said is like, oh, the best one is always the one it always seems like the person who's doing the selling is telling you this is the best one. Right. So I'm I'm a cheerleader for all of us to attend our own nature, you know, to to honor our individual unique selves. We are very different. And there's some things, you know, like I say, there's a process in learning. There's a process in learning guitar and it works. But it's important that you take into account this unique nature that you have. So that's what that's what I want to talk about, honoring that nature in both learning and performing. If you don't perform, that's okay. At some point you may, I mean, I think hopefully I'll have some wisdom for you that's helpful because you may perform just for your spouse or your children or your parents or your roommate or whatever. And that still feels like performing, I'm telling you. Yeah. So um, so there are three areas I was thinking about covering today. Um, one of them is the introversion, extroversion continuum, where you are on that and how you can use your knowledge of, of where you are on that to assist you in your practice and your performance. The other is Ayurveda, and a lot of your listeners are familiar with Ayurveda, and I think you are too. Mm -hmm. And so we can talk about how your dosha, how you can use what you know about your dosha to you know, keep you moving, but not feel too much pressure, to, to really assist you. And the other is, is much, uh, it's a small topic, but that's just your biorhythms. Right. So um, I guess we could talk about them in that order, if that sounds That okay. sounds great, yeah. So uh a number of years ago, I I read this book. I like a lot of books. <laughs> and and you may be familiar with this too. It's by Susan Cain. It's called Quiet, the Power of Introverts in a World That Won't Stop Talking. Mm -hmm. Quiet. And you know, I I am an introvert. And a lot of people who have known me for a long time don't even realize that because mm -hmm. I am a talkative introvert. Mm -hmm. So that's what I want to bring up is that um, you can love people. You can talk a lot. But the real key is, do you gain or lose energy when you're with a group of people? It totally drains my energy when I'm with a group of people. I put on a really good show. Yeah, so so that's why people think, oh, no, you're an extrovert. No, 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 it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> but you can be anywhere. that It's not like you're all one or all the other. You might be very quiet and not at all talkative. You might be um, just anywhere in there you know you could be somewhere in the in the middle you can be in the balance between introversion and extroversion so yeah what does that mean for your guitar work is what we should get back to or whatever it is you're learning um if you if you go with what society in general tries to put up there as the ideal mm -hmm. you'll be trying to be an extrovert Mm -hmm. like I said that's that doesn't feel good and it's right. not going to bring forth your best work yes so um in fact probably there are probably way more performers entertainers musicians who are introverted than extroverted but again they they're putting on a good show yeah that introversion is really when she talks about the power of, of quiet like there's a lot of creativity in a lot of introverts um and and you know the introspection, all the things that that feed into your art. Yeah, we need introverts and the sensitivity. We need them. We need everybody. Yeah. So um, so if you if you determine if you know if you read some more stuff about it or, or something I'm saying clicks with you and you realize oh, I get really drained. 
I'm at work all day and I'm not even working that much with all those people and that noise. I, I can't, I'm very sensitive. I can't take all that noise, you know, yeah. I can't take all these people without getting really, really drained. And so if that's you, you want to honor that. Mm -hmm. And if you have, a, say you want to be an entertainer or you just want to go do a little show every now and then, be sure you give yourself lots of time alone before and after that feeds you. Then you get your energy back. It's nourishing. Yeah. Honor that and don't feel like you've got to go to an after show party. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Or in your practice, know that you need a lot of quiet space. You're not going to want to do this with somebody else in the other room going, nah, 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 nah. you know, <laughs> you need quiet. Yeah. So, so when you're learning, when you're practicing, honor that and, and give yourself permission to take as much of that quiet as you need. Yeah. Um, so that's that's kind of a, a brief uh, thing about the introvert, extrovert. And then the next thing, which is a, a big topic, which is Ayurveda. I mean, we could go on and on forever about that. But for those mm -hmm. who don't know what Ayurveda is, it's an ancient medical system from India. And it's amazing. I mean, modern science is now proving yes. and so all excited about proving these things that Ayurveda has been saying for two to 3000 years. Yeah. So that's super cool. And it's all natural and it's based on uh, what's called doshas. Mm -hmm. And the dosha is an energy system for your biology, your emotional, your physical, your mental, um, mental, physical, yeah. Mind, body, and emotion. Yes. And so you have a particular dosha and everything has a dosha. Plants have a dosha. Everything has these different energies. But the the three primary doshas are vata, which is characterized by a dry, um, active, <laughs> um, creative, um, active mind, active body, probably thin person, like physically. So all these things, mentally, emotionally, and physically, you'll see. Um, and when you... You determine your dosha, you'll know more about yourself and yeah. how to respond in learning and performing. But but each one, you know, if you want to be in balance. So if you're like, you know, everybody's not totally vata, pitta, or kapha, which are the three doshas. There is probably some combination of them. But if you if you are out of balance, then you have emotional problems, physical problems. You know, again, it can affect your learning and your performing. Yeah. So, so Vata is great, creative, high energy, but but we can get burned out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just like if I'm an introvert, so I'm, I'm an introvert and Vata. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. So I get burned out if I'm not careful. So you take care of yourself in similar ways. Um and um you can feel pressured. So, you know, when I talk about people selling you what you need, it's always funny to me, like people try and sell me like oh here's weight loss i'm like hello <laughs> <laughs> I'll treat somebody else all right not for me i'm trying always trying to keep it on right yeah yeah so we're all very different and we need what we need so um with if you're vata then you have to take care of that and you have to have you can do that with calming foods calming teas meditation or quiet time things that will help you soothe because you don't want to be out of balance Vata because you'll get really cold and feel really bad. Yeah. So the next dosha um, we can talk about is Pitta and, and that body type would be, you know, sort of medium height, height, weight, proportionate. Um, and, and what aggravates and, and very stable, very, you know, easy, easy, nice, but, but can be aggravated by heat. You know, Vata is aggravated by wind. Yeah. It can be under a fan, for example. Or right. Like, oh, you need that. Um, so I don't want to aggravate that, especially if I'm going to a gig or teaching mm -hmm. a lesson mm -hmm. or learning mm -hmm. something intense. So Pitta is aggravated by heat. You know, that would be like a fiery redhead, like, whoa, get out of the way. You know? <laughs> get him out of the sun, right? Right. Um, and then Kapha is, oh, lovely easy to be around calm um lovely moist lush skin and hair um stable easy nice kind kind but aggravated or out of balance kapha is 
sunk into the couch and don't get up. Okay. Gains a lot of weight easily. You know, so if you're out of balance kapha, then you're not going to feel well or or be, um, I, wanna, I don't want to say productive, but like moving forward in your life the way you might want to. Right. Your learning and your performance are in other areas of your life. So again, you can balance these things through your diet, through teas, through meditation, and just awareness, you know, so wait a minute, I am, if I'm kapha, and somebody says, get in there and do your practice, you've got to stay with your schedule, I, I should probably go, okay, mm -hmm. if I'm vata, I should probably go, wait, don't push me, I, I'm going to do this on my own, you see, yeah, mm -hmm. so you take, you know, you take control of these messages you don't let those messages run your life right you don't let yourself feel guilty or wrong about any of them you know wait that's great for that other person but i know me don't push me or yeah. give me a little push i could use it mm -hmm. so you can also do that for yourself yeah so i gotta push myself if i know that my nature is to just sit on this couch and go deeper and deeper into it and get to the end of the day, day after day and not have accomplished my goals. And I'm going to, I'm going to follow this advice that I keep seeing on the internet about how to get up and get going, you know? Yeah. You know, you got to get that motivation going, but if you are already just pushing it all the time, <laughs> like we talked about earlier, like I don't sleep much I'm yeah. just more. Yeah. Yeah. So I have to I have to be careful about that. No, I don't need to push more. I need to not stop doing things, but do them with a really in a really relaxed way. Right. You know, in an awareness, you know, be more conscious about take a breath. I don't have to do this all at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. So so those things, this is what I'm talking about attending to your nature mm -hmm. and learning. And um and set up your environment you know i mentioned diet meditation so forth but set up your environment so like if you tend to be really active and you uh just kind of going like 60 all the time and don't slow down soothe out your practice room yeah you know, you might want some aromatherapy, some nice little flowers, not too, nothing busy on the walls. Ah, <sighs> mm -hmm. you need stimulation, put some stimulating in there. Right. You know? Now, the, the last thing that I, I mentioned was biorhythms. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we don't all get up and go to bed at the same time. We don't all eat at the same time. We don't all eat the same amount at the same time. Right. So there are certain things, and I advise people like try and practice early in the day if you can, because then that's practical. Yeah. <laughs> get it done. <laughs> mm -hmm. For me, it's essential to at least do some of my stuff early in the day because that's when I'm really creative and I don't want to jam myself into doing something that is just sort of mechanical that needs to be done and mm -hmm. then get tired by the end of the day and say oh let's see I was going to be creative here what is it you know how many of us have gotten to the end of the day and gone I just don't have it <laughs> I mean that's the main thing with, with playing guitar it's like people think oh I have a day job and I'll go right. home and do it. well you go home and you just don't have it you've used it all exactly yeah so that's why I always got up really early and got in practice, got in whatever, because that's for me. Right. Yeah. So that's balancing, knowing that my adrenals are going to be stressed at this time of day. So don't expect that of myself. Yeah. I think that's really what my point in all of this is, is don't, don't hurt yourself. Don't think you're supposed to be like somebody else. Right. Be like, you know, follow your own nature. But first, you have to know your nature. Right. Yeah. And I think that's what, you know, a lot of people don't do is they don't listen to themselves. I think we are, our inner selves are always talking to us. They're sending us messages. They're always, you know, sending us signals somehow, some way. But if we take time to understand who we are as a person, we take time to understand our bodies. We take time to understand our inner selves. Our bodies are going to tell us when we had enough, you know, and so many times 
I'm even a victim of it. I push myself sometimes and I, you? <laughs> I would never guess. <laughs> and you know, it's like, I, I practice, I practice and, and, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm getting better at it. And I listen to myself and myself says, stop. I stop, you know, because you do, you could end up burning yourself out. And then the things you love the most, you don't have the energy to put a hundred percent in and yeah. music, especially because music is so, so it's so relaxing, you know, whether you're a listener or a player, you know, you, you know, when you, when you play, I hear, you know, people talk about how the, they have that special love within them. They're able to express themselves through music and it just gives them a, a special feeling that, you know, just, it just means everything to them. You know, music makes the world go around for them. And as a listener, it just changes my whole, my whole way of just feeling, thinking, my body, everything. It just, it, it hits me. And, and the music that gets me the most is when I'm listening to someone play, and especially if they're singing, or even if they're just putting a lot of effort into an instrument, you can tell, you can feel it. You can feel, you can feel the vibrations and the energies off that person. And that's what really makes me want to hear more where you sometimes you can hear musicians, they come on and they don't, it's like, why are they there? You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and then you have musicians that you just don't want them to ever stop because they just, they bring a special vibration and a special energy to the room that just changes your whole demeanor inside and out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they're playing, you know, that's another way that you're being true to your nature is those people that, that make that impact on you are playing what is true to their nature. They're they're probably not playing what you know somebody told them they need to play to make the money. Yeah. There are people who do that, but they're probably not gonna have that kind of an effect on you that you're describing. Right. So so that's another thing you can do is just claim that. Claim what you love mm -hmm. and don't, you know, don't feel like you have to do what somebody else thinks is cool or is gonna help you get somewhere or whatever you know yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that kind of goes into another topic that we could talk about sometime maybe is it extrinsic versus intrinsic value okay. yeah but um but I mean even if even if you want something that's out there I still believe completely that the way to do it is from in here yeah yeah a hundred percent I think I think it all comes in here you know, mm -hmm. and I always, I always believe that the, the heart is stronger than the mind and that our heart gives us messages and the mind reacts, you know, and, and, you know, you, you talk to a scientist, he's going to say the opposite, but, you know, for me, I always feel like the heart guides me The I feel, I feel like my heart takes me to where I need to go, you know, and it's my brain that controls my body and just leads me there, you know, but I always feel like my messages are coming straight from the heart. They are. I, I know you're right about that. I mean, that's your true self, right? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, your heart has a mind. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're probably, you know, you've probably read about this, but I mean, your heart has a memory. Your yeah. Heart has memories. Your heart has knowledge that, um, like you said, scientists won't say, well, they can say or not say all they want, but but there are too many, there's too much evidence to the contrary. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so that's a that's an important thing for us to realize how wonderful we are. Yeah. Yeah. That being different from everyone else is a it's a wonderful thing. Yeah. Yeah. And and yet we want to continue to be going in the direction that we've chosen. Right. Means that we don't just sit there and go, oh, I'm just like this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> might not get you there <laughs> so it's always balancing and that takes a lot of honesty and authenticity and trust right you know, trust yourself and your answer mm -hmm. you know when somebody is saying oh just come watch this movie with me and you want to practice okay you have to make the decision what are you going to feel better doing right two hours which of those and, it, and I'm not making a value judgment here. You may feel better. It depends on the person in the movie. You know? right. <laughs> but if it's just like, oh, you know, kind of 
mundane. Right. And and there's something else that you want to do here that's really going to be enriching your life, but you have to invest in it, invest in it a little at a time, one after another after another. Right. And commitment, you want to keep that. Yes. So and I, I've thought so much about this because so many of us, I mean, so so many of us hurt ourselves by driving toward excellence. Mm-hmm. Then you know, we look back and go, I don't think I could have achieved this level of excellence without driving like that. Right. I mean, there's a part of me that goes, oh, I shouldn't have done that. And there's another part that goes, I like being here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and all that work I put in, I thought about this for years because I I counsel and guide other guitar players and I don't want to take them in a direction where they're going to hurt themselves, but neither do I want to guide them in a way that not that I assume everybody's going to do exactly what I say, but still it feels like a responsibility as a teacher. Yeah. I don't want to guide them and I don't want to keep them from fulfilling their potential. Right. So, you know, what, you know, what I've come to after a lot of thought and a lot of years is that go ahead and do as much as you want. Just know that you have more than you think you do. Right. Do. You have more energy, you have more stamina. So the manage it through balance. Okay. Right. So if you balance, if you if you learn your breath work, for example, mm-hmm. talk about that. Stop. I have a timer at my computer where I practice. I have little yoga timers. Oh, do you? And I set them because I will not breathe when I'm doing really intense stuff or I'll, I'll get really crunched up or tight, you know, and I yeah. kind of goes off. I don't care what I've got to stop, connect, ground, breathe. Yeah. You know, because I've had times when I thought I was going to die. I mean, I literally had pushed myself so hard. I just thought I can't, you know, my body's not doing what it needs to do here. So, yeah. So, so you can do that. I could have done all the things that I did. I feel certain that I could have achieved the same level of excellence, whatever that level is for me yeah. to judge it. Um, put in the same amount of time, but with a different emotional and mental approach. Yeah. So more of it was loving and less of it was beating myself up. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I can tell. I, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, so when you when you do anything, I think you can do anything. And by the way, I think you can tell anybody anything from a place of love and it will always go well. Yes, definitely. If, if you're not from that place, you better go back and think about the well until you can cultivate that. Right, exactly. Is it probably not going to go very well or it might not. I, I'm not willing to take that chance. <laughs> yeah. I think I think if more people did it like that, I I think the world would be a better place because a lot of people don't think before they speak and they just say it. And that's where confrontation or that's where disagreement or that's where, you know, problems occur is that, you know, you have to really think about, you know, visit your heart and really think about how you're going to want to get this message across to that other person. And when you do that, you know, the results are are 100 percent better. Yeah. And then when you do that with yourself. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's yeah. healing. That's healing. You can propel forward so quickly and so much more joyfully. Yeah. Than if you were beating yourself up. Oh, I should. Yeah, you know, I think I mentioned this. I don't know if I mentioned this, but I think I did in the previous episode. Is the one thing that I really don't want to hear people say is should. Mm. You know, no, you shouldn't anything. You should just be who you are. Yeah. I mean, there's no, there's no place that you have to meet. You know, you're. This is not a contest, right? This is music. So, just it can be as simple and profound, I think, as reminding yourself, I'm going into that practice room because I love guitar. Yeah. And I love like all the things we do in our lives that we might not want to do. They would be like, Ugh, except. For love, like things you do for your children or your pets or uh, whatever, you know, for your garden, whatever. If you just had right. this job that somebody was paying you not enough money and they didn't treat you well and you had to 
you know, do weed all day long and there's yeah. that you never got to attach to or connect with, that wouldn't be very much fun. When you go out in your garden and you let that energy meld, let your energy meld with it and you read it and you hear it and you feel it and you feel that earth and then you see things growing, you could weed all day. Yeah. And be happy. Right. But sometimes when we're doing things that are hard, that take a commitment, that take a lot of practice, like yeah. an instrument. Right. It's very fun, but sometimes it's it's frustrating. Sometimes it's it's difficult. Sometimes you just think, man, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. so yes. Just like I say, it's it's a simple thing, but it can really make a big difference to remind yourself, I love this. Mm -hmm. I love this. I'm grateful yeah. for this. You know, same thing just for yourself. You know, I'm happy being an introvert or an extrovert or vata or pitta or kapha. This is me. It's wonderful. Now, how can I take care of me? Right. How can I take care of my guitar? How can I take care of our relationship? Right. You know, because it's a relationship with your guitar, you and your guitar. That's yeah. why I end it there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and you you value that and you honor it in whatever ways that you can and things go so much better. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And I like what you said about not comparing yourself. Cause I think that's the biggest problem is that people compare themselves. They, yeah. they idolize somebody and then they compare themselves to that person. And that person might be on level 150 and you're, you just start and maybe you're on level 13 and they get discouraged really easily because they're, they're comparing themselves against somebody that's been in the business and been playing an instrument for, for decades, you know, and they're just beginning. You can't compare yourself to other people because everybody's different and everybody has, I'm assuming that everyone has their own style because when I look at music, everybody, the ones that really did well have their own style. The ones that kind of never really made it, or they maybe had one hit and that was it are the ones who copied off everybody else but the people who really get noticed are the people who really you know kind of shine because they have their own unique value to them not only that, that but this is a this is a really interesting thing that you can start to notice or look up some of the most famous musicians in the world can only stay on their track oh they can only play lead they can't play rhythm guitar who would think that they yeah. have, who would think that they're the most brilliant, amazing, but we don't hear that. that and so you go into the jam session with the people on down the street and you feel bad about yourself because you can't do every aspect. You, you're not, you're just mediocre at rhythm. You're just mediocre at lead. You don't sing that well. Well, neither does he. And he's, <laughs> he's just really good at one thing. That's neither good nor bad in my estimation. It's just very interesting because it it shines a light on what you're talking about comparing yourself. You will never be like anybody else. And at the end of the day, when you really find out what everybody else is and what they can do, you'll probably go, hallelujah, I love mm -hmm. being me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. and and I think that will help people's self-esteem too, is when you're, when you're good at something, you know, and you don't compare yourself and you're, you, you, you work hard to get good at what you're good at, you know, that, that boosts a person's self-esteem up that makes a person feel good about themselves, you know, and it, it helps them achieve, you know, that, 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 um, that, that balance in their life because they now know what they're good at. They can balance themselves and they don't have to try so hard in certain, all these different areas because they know that their focus is this one specific area. And like you said, if you listen to your inner self and you, and you can practice all you want, but when your body says, okay, I had enough and you stop, or, you know, you don't push yourself over the, over the hill, you know, it could be a, a really rewarding experience. Yeah, or maybe, you know, again, that doesn't mean you have to settle for just taking one one path. You know, for me, I love being able to do all these different things. I can play with different people and so on and so forth. I, it doesn't bother me that I'm not the best at one or the other, you know. So right. um, because I'm, you know, I feel very satisfied with how I can do the whole, you know, so I can yeah. make 
to write something, if I want to arrange something, if I want to jump in and play with somebody else, I've got the, the picture of the whole and I can do all the components. Yeah. But somebody else might not be satisfied with that. They might want to be the person who's just great at the leaves. Yeah. Yeah. So, or whatever else. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, just, but, but I mean, constantly um, pushing outside of your limits with your perceived limits will help you know where you want to go next and how right. far you want to go into those places. Right. Yeah. I like, and I like the idea that you mentioned about like meditating, taking time out for yourself, understanding who you are, you know, and realizing what, what type of person you are, you know, and, and going by that and, you know, and see what makes you, what makes you click when, and what doesn't make you click and to put yourself around those surroundings so you could grow, it seems. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you can grow in a healthy way. Yeah. Yeah. Too. I mean, also, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's even better, right? Yeah. Okay. And I think when you grow in a healthy way and you're open and comfortable in your own skin, you go further and faster. Yeah. So you just float through. Yeah. You don't have those places where you put on the brakes because your body tenses up or you tell your, your mind tells you something that Oh, not good enough or stop there or you know you don't have all those things to put on the brakes right right yeah I think I think that that it's very important to to really understand who you are what your needs are and then to and not put any like like you said limitations you know do as much as you can and and let yourself you know be free and enjoy it you know while you have it you know mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> So that, that pretty much covers, I think, you know, maybe some of your listeners have some other things they'd like to add, and I'd love to hear them. I'm sure you would, too, if anybody wants to comment about um, what you do to, to attend to your nature or to nourish your body or your emotions um, or some other area that, that we could do that in. Yeah, definitely. That's the uh things. I think, I think our last poll we did, we had a poll and I think, what was it? I think people procrastinated and that was one of the reasons that they didn't move forward as much as because of procrastination saying they were going to do it. It and was motivation. Motivation. That's what it was. It was motivation. We Which did a poll. Close. But yeah, I mean, I thought about that. That was interesting. You sent me the results of that poll and I appreciate that. Um, this is something that, is another topic we can maybe we can talk about that more on another show yeah uh, is that sometimes you have to jump start yourself mm -hmm. like if you don't if you're having trouble with motivation there's nobody that's going to solve that but you right nobody's going to solve it so you got to figure it out and there are things you can do. I mean, go listen to some different kinds of music, watch, you know, what really is good for me. I love uh, music documentaries. Oh yeah. I like them too. Yeah. yeah. Just watch one this week. that blew my mind. Have you seen in restless dreams, the Paul Simon movie? No, I haven't, but a friend of mine just watched it and they, they said it was amazing. It was very good. I mean, I stretched it out over several times because I, I mean, to me, it was very emotional. I had an emotional response and I, I like to um, take stuff in, digest it, and then go take some more. I don't want to just like throw everything in at the same time. Yeah, yeah. That's really good. And then there are a lot of them about um, people maybe you haven't even heard of mm -hmm. or uh, producers, you know, backup musicians. Yeah. Session musicians, all kinds of stuff that it's, it's interesting and it's motivating to see these people in a way that maybe you haven't seen them, or maybe you don't even know they exist, if they're session musicians or so forth. Right. So, so those are good things to motivate yourself. Also just listening to different kinds of music. I I lament the fact that we don't listen to music the way we used to, because, you know, back in the old days, everybody always seems to better back in the old days, but it was because we really listened to music. We didn't walk around and multitask. You know, we had a um, where I talked about, you know, we talked about, um, Active listening and passive listening. Yeah. And now I think so much has moved to passive listening. And also it's um, like so many things that we input these days, it's 
it's broken up into small pieces. You know, 50 years ago, you listened to an album and it was a work of art. Yeah. Getting to the end, it was, you know, <laughs> consciously created. As yeah. An album. Um, and now you get the big seller numbers off of it. Like, you know, like we were listening to radio from back then that time. But, um, you know, to go back and, and do some more, go back and listen to the episode on active and passive listening. Yeah. I don't know recall that. But anyway, it's there and, and, and do more active listening, you know, if you're not motivated. But then also just questioning, do I, do I want this? Yeah. How much do I want this? Right. Definitely. I think that's a good question to ask because a lot of times people want it, but do they really want it? Because they say they want it, but then they're not doing what it takes to get there, you know? So do they want the process. Do you want the process to go with it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Because it it's an involved process, a lifelong process to be engaged with. Right. And, if all you want is to be able to, you know, play a song for somebody or stand up on stage or this, that, there's nothing wrong with that, but you're probably not going to get very good at it if you don't engage with the process. Exactly. Exactly. Now, if you okay. had, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Finish what you said. I was just going to say, there's a lot of things we all want, but, you know, we got to prioritize and we're not going to get everything that we think, oh, that'd be nice. That'd be nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. We have to prioritize. And yeah. That's that's definitely a, an important aspect is, is really thinking about what you really want and how bad you really want it and yeah. then what it takes to get there and then, you know, prioritize, you know, how you're going to get there and, you know, the, the things you need to do in order to get there. And then there might be sacrifices along the way, but if you really want it and you're really motivated to want it, get it, then you have to, you have to do it, you know, yeah no ifs or buts about it yeah now if, if you had to take today's um podcast and you wanted to like really emphasize on some important aspects what would you say you want the listeners to understand from today's talk just that you are unique and the, it, the, the better you know yourself and attend to those qualities that you've discovered the happier you'll be and the, the more productive you'll be and the more comfortable you'll be in your music. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And where can people find you on the website? They can find me at limitless-guitar.com. And anybody who's not sure, I, you know, I'm happy to help you determine and attend to these types of things. You know, this is this is what I do. Mm -hmm. And um so you can find me, you can email me, you can book a, a lesson or a coaching session. Um, there's a lot of stuff you can get on the website. So come come there and visit me. I love to hear from people. So don't be shy. Mm -hmm. And before we go, can you just tell people a few of the services that you have on your website? Sure. So I, as I just mentioned, I teach, I still teach. Um, and you can come once a week, you can come once a month, you can come once never come again, whatever you <laughs> want. And then um, I have a line of instructional materials that I've created, books and videos, mostly books. Um, then I have what I call the virtual studio, which has more videos in it, audio, text, and video lessons. It's filled with video lessons, uh, with uh, lessons of all kinds, and also courses. Mm. The virtual studio, I always think it's just something that everybody should at least try because you can try it for a month for free. And there's so much you can learn in a month. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to learn a lot for free in a month? And then if you decide to stay the next month, it'll be $9.95. So it's cheap for what you get. Right. And, um, what else? What am I missing? Okay. Books. I think you hit it. I think one, virtual studio. Yeah. The lessons. You hit it all. Yeah. Okay. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, today, today has been great. I, I, I think it's really important that people actually 
really understand about achieving balance through through your nature, you know, and uh, everybody, you know, has a, their own definition. But, you know, if you look inside yourself, you'll find what that balance is. And it's it's learning, you know, who you are as a person and what your needs are and, you know, what and finding that balance, you know, so you can really, you know, put your all into it. And as you said, you can go a little past your all too, and you can push yourself to be better, you know, yeah. and uh, there's nothing wrong with that. And, uh, you know, I, I, and I, I like that concept, you know, and I think for people, for people, you know, everybody has it in them, you know, you know, don't, I think people don't, shouldn't just, you know, discourage themselves saying, oh, I can't do that. I can't do that. You know, I think people need to try, you know, and to me, I, I don't believe in the word failure. I think, you know, if you try something and you put your effort into it, there is, there is no such thing as, as Not somewhere. Yeah. You did something, you learned something, you, you took a step higher. Yeah, I agree. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. And if you, and again, if you, if you have doubts about that or you're struggling with it, just contact me. I can help you feel better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. T today has been amazing. Thank you so much, Charlotte, for coming Thank on. You. I really Thank enjoyed it. I really did. And I always do. <laughs> Yeah, you always provide a whirlwind of, of uh, information and you're so passionate in what you do. And that's what I, I love about you is that you're you you you're so passionate. And I think that's what makes a great musician, a great teacher, you know, uh, a great mentor is when you're when you really love what you do and you do it because it means it's meaningful in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. Well, you have a great day. You too. All right. And I will see you soon. Yes, I will see you soon too. Bye-bye.